In late modern continental philosophy, Neo-Kantianism was a revival of the 18th-century philosophy of Immanuel Kant. More specifically, it was influenced by Arthur Schopenhauer's critique of the Kantian philosophy in his work The World as Will and Representation 1818, as well as by other post-Kantian philosophers such as Jakob Friedrich Fries and Johann Friedrich Herbert. Origins The «Back to Kant» movement began in the 1860s, as a reaction to the German materialist controversy in the 1850s, in addition to the work of Hermann von Helmholtz and Eduard Zeller, early fruits of the movement were Kuno Fischer's works on Kant and Friedrich Albert Lang's History of Materialism Geschichte des Materialismus, 1873–75, the latter of which argued that transcendental idealism superseded the historic struggle between material idealism and mechanistic materialism. Fischer was earlier involved in a dispute with the Aristotelian idealist Friedrich Adolf Trendelenburg concerning the interpretation of the results of the transcendental aesthetic, a dispute that prompted Hermann Cohen's 1871 seminal work Kant's Theory der Erfahrung, a book often regarded as the foundation of 20th century neo Kantianism. It is in reference to the Fischer Trendelenburg debate and Cohen's work that Hans Weinger started his massive commentary on the critique of pure reason. Topic. Varieties Hermann Cohen became the leader of the Marburg School centered in the town of the same name, the other prominent representatives of which were Paul Natorp and Ernst Cassirer. Another important group, the Southwest German School also known as the Heidelberg School or Baden School, centered in Heidelberg, Baden in Southwest Germany included Wilhelm Windelband, Heinrich Rickert and Ernst Trolch. The Marburg School emphasized epistemology and philosophical logic, whereas the Southwest School emphasized issues of culture and value. A third group, mainly represented by Leonard Nelson, established the Neo-Frisian School named after post-Kantian philosopher Jakob Friedrich Fries. The Neo-Kantian schools tended to emphasize scientific readings of Kant, often downplaying the role of intuition in favor of concepts. However, the ethical aspects of neo-Kantian thought often drew them within the orbit of socialism, and they had an important influence on Ostromarxism and the revisionism of Eduard Bernstein. Lang and Cohen in particular were keen on this connection between Kantian thought and socialism. Another important aspect of the neo-Kantian movement was its attempt to promote a revised notion of Judaism, particularly in Cohen's seminal work, one of the few works of the movement available in English translation. The Neo-Kantian school was of importance in devising a division of philosophy that has had durable influence well beyond Germany. It made early use of terms such as epistemology and upheld its prominence over ontology. Natorp had a decisive influence on the history of phenomenology and is often credited with leading Edmund Husserl to adopt the vocabulary of transcendental idealism. Emile Lask was influenced by Edmund Husserl's work, and himself exerted a remarkable influence on the young Martin Heidegger. The debate between Cassirer and Heidegger over the interpretation of Kant led the latter to formulate reasons for viewing Kant as a forerunner of phenomenology. This view was disputed in important respects by Eugen Fink. An abiding achievement of the Neo Kantians was the founding of the journal Kant Studien, which still survives today. By 1933, after the rise of Nazism, the various Neo Kantian circles in Germany had dispersed. Notable Neo-Kantian philosophers Related thinkers Robert Adamson 1852 Henri Poincaré 1854 Georg Simmel 1858 Max Weber 1864 José Ortega y Gasset 1885 Georg Lukacs 1885 to 1971 Hermann Weyl 1885 to 1955 Topic Contemporary Neo-Kantianism In the analytic tradition, the revival of interest in the work of Kant that has been underway since Peter Strassen's work The Bounds of Sense can also be viewed as effectively neo-Kantian, not least due to its continuing emphasis on epistemology at the expense of ontology. 
In the 1980s, interest in Neo-Kantianism has revived in the wake of the work of Gillian Rose, who is a critic of this movement's influence on modern philosophy, and because of its influence on the work of Max Weber. The Kantian concern for the limits of perception strongly influenced the antipositivist sociological movement in late 19th century Germany, particularly in the work of Georg Simmel Simmel's question, What is society? is a direct allusion to Kant's own, What is nature? The current work of Michael Friedman is explicitly neo-Kantian. Continental philosophers drawing on the Kantian understandings of the transcendental include Jean-Francois Lyotard and Jean-Luc Nancy. Topic. See also German idealism North American Kant society Topic. Notes Topic. References Sebastian Luft ed., The Neo-Kantian Reader, Routledge, 2015 Topic. Further reading Frederick C. Beiser 2014, The Genesis of Neo-Kantianism, 1796–1880 Oxford, Oxford University Press Hermann Cohen 1919, Religion of Reason out of the Sources of Modern Judaism 1978, Trans. New York Harry van der Linden 1988, Kantian Ethics and Socialism Hackett Publishing Company, Indianapolis and Cambridge Thomas Mormon, Mikhail Katz. Infinitesimals as an Issue of Neo-Kantian Philosophy of Science. Hopos, The Journal of the International Society for the History of Philosophy of Science 3 2013, No. 2, 236-280. Chttps colon slash slash www.jstore.org slash stable slash ten dot one oh eight six slash six seven one three four eight and https colon slash slash archive dot org slash ab slash one three oh four dot one oh two seven Gillian Rose nineteen eighty one Hegel Contra Sociology Athlone London Arthur Schopenhauer eighteen eighteen The World as Will and Representation nineteen sixty nine trans Dover, New York Topic. External links Quotations related to Neo-Kantianism at Wikiquote Neo-Kantianism article in the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy